In 1964, Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev figured that civilizations can be categorized by the total amount of energy available to them. He defined three levels of civilizations based on their capacity to harness and use power. These have since been expanded by another four, in light of the increasingly wild speculation spawned by marrying mathematics and theoretical physics. The Kardashev scale, as it's called, now lists six levels of civilizations based on their power consumption and implicitly on their technological advancement and extension. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at these civilizations and see which one is the most advanced. As Kardashev outlined in his influential paper, Transmission of Information by Extraterrestrial Civilizations, an advanced, probably alien civilization would have the capacity to transmit radio signals far into the cosmos. Although Kardashev initially came up with three types of civilizations, a scale that has since been expanded in a variety of ways by others, focusing not only on communication technology but additional factors. A Type I civilization, also known as the Planetary Civilization, has the capacity to harness all the energy of its home planet, utilizing all the energy that reaches the planet like solar and all the energy it can produce – thermal, hydro, wind, etc. Kardashev described it as having technological level close to the level presently attained on the Earth. Physicist Michio Kaku thinks a planetary civilization should be able to control such things as earthquakes, the weather, and volcanoes, and would be building ocean cities. If that is the case, we are not quite there yet. Human civilization as of 2018 was producing around 18.4 terawatts of power, placing us at just over 0.6 on the Kardashev scale. The scale is logarithmic, and as such, while 0.6 may appear close, Type 1 energy consumption would be around 9,450 times higher than current levels. That is a phenomenal amount of energy. Let's put it in perspective. Given that our 2018 figure is only around 28 times more than that of 1800, a world of around 1 billion humans, where the most advanced technology was James Watt's steam engine. It's clear that four orders of magnitude is a difference so large that it's difficult to overstate. In fact, finding a point in the planet's history where the totality of human civilization commanded four orders of magnitude less power than today is literally impossible. When humans collectively metabolized, 10,000 times less energy was certainly before the Neolithic Revolution, which began circa 10,000 BC. This was a time when we were hunter-gatherers, whose most advanced technology comprised of a sharpened stone. Civilization, as we commonly define it, simply did not exist. Taking the average annual growth rate of world power consumption over the past 165 years, which is 2.6%, and projecting it into the future, we would reach a Kardashev Type 1 civilization in around 2370. The point here is not to predict the year in which we become a Type 1 civilization, but rather to demonstrate that getting there eventually is inevitable, as long as the growth rate stays positive. The feasibility of producing such a huge amount of power relies on continuing a similar rate of technological progress that took us to this point. This could involve fairly exotic space-based solar mirror arrays or antimatter generators. But equally, if we successfully harness nuclear fusion, the same energy source that powers the sun, that would provide more than enough energy to reach Type 1. Of course, historical growth rates relating to technological ability and energy consumption do not prove that future growth rates will remain permanently above zero, or an unrelenting upwards trajectory towards Type 1. But there may well be ongoing underlying factors driving such a pathway, factors we do not even control. One of these relates to the technosphere. This complex planetary megasystem of technology, institutions, and humans, effectively every element of civilization, including humans merely as subcomponents, is considered by scientist Peter K. Half, who coined the term as an emerging autonomous global paradigm beyond our control or detailed understanding. Put simply, our civilization is a gigantic machine with its own logic. While currently reliant on humans to keep it functioning, it's too large and complex for us to fully direct. Once we get to Type 1, there is only one way to go, and that is heading towards Type 2. This would see us leave Earth, looking to draw energy from other planets. 
If we become an interplanetary civilization that can make use of the total energy potential of a star, we would become a Type II civilization, also known as a stellar civilization. But how easy is it to harness the energy of a star? One way is to build a megastructure around it, maybe the hypothetical Dyson Sphere. This would completely enclose a star and capture all of its energy, then be able to transfer the energy for use by the home planet. Alternatively, if fusion power has been mastered by the race, a reactor on a truly immense scale could be used to satisfy their needs. Nearby gas giants can be utilized for their hydrogen, slowly drained of life by an orbiting reactor. It's fair to imagine that a Type II civilization would not just build these megastructures, but also inhabit them and completely control what goes on inside them. It would control the orbit of all planets in that system, harvest asteroids and comets at its leisure, and basically consume the entire solar system. A Type III civilization, also known as a galactic civilization, is capable of inhabiting and harnessing the energy of an entire galaxy, colonizing and controlling numerous systems. It would be able to harness, store, and use the energy output of all stars within that galaxy. Such a civilization would use planets like building blocks, being able to move planets from one solar system to another, merge solar systems, merge stars, absorb supernovae, and even create stars. In terms of humans, hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, both biological and mechanical, may result in the inhabitants of this Type III civilization being incredibly different from the human race as we know it. These could be cybernetic organisms, beings both biological and robotic, may be better known as cyborgs. Thus, leaving the descendants of regular humans being a subspecies among the now highly advanced society. This would be a world where robots build Dyson spheres at will all over the galaxy, utilizing some yet inconceivable space propulsion technology to move around. After such an advancement, what comes next? Kardashev did not see a need to hypothesize any future civilizations, but prognosticators since then have proposed more levels, starting with the supergalactic Type IV civilization, which would almost be able to harness the energy content of the entire universe, and with that, they could traverse the accelerating expansion of space. Furthermore, advanced races of these species may live inside supermassive black holes, an essentially indestructible and highly utopian civilization. To previous methods of generating energy, these kinds of feats are considered impossible. A Type IV civilization would need to tap into energy sources unknown to us using strange or currently unknown laws of physics. Then there is Type V, the next possible advancement to such a civilization, a multiverse culture capable of harnessing the energy of multiple universes. Here, beings would be like gods, having the knowledge to manipulate the universe as they please. No doubt a child of the increased popularity of String, the Type V civilization would outgrow its own universe. It would span countless parallel universes, being able to manage the very structure of reality. Even more abstract is the Type VI civilization. The Type VI exists outside of time and space and is capable of creating universes and multiverses and destroying them just as easily. Very similar in concept to a deity. If ascending the Kardashev scale is a goal, and it is for some, its inevitability might seem desirable and exciting, but it's not the case that an upwards trend guarantees a safe landing. If humans are being carried along an exponential trajectory of more and more energy production, there is a risk of collapse along the way. We might see climate change now as an example of that phenomenon. Energy consumption has increased exponentially, while the associated waste, principally CO2, has accumulated to a point where both the biosphere and technosphere face severe consequences. A civilization approaching Type 1 would face a form of climate change on an even greater scale. Elementary thermodynamics and energy balance dictates that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. If we consider a steady-state scenario wherein we assume most energy acquired is not stored over very long periods of time, then the energy we use is inevitably released as thermal infrared energy into the biosphere and radiated into space. 
It's not an issue of energy efficiency, but a matter of applying the conservation of energy over the entire Earth's system. Before the heat is released into space, it warms the surface of the planet, in an effect known as direct heating. This form of climate change is currently negligible compared to the impacts of greenhouse gases, but would drastically increase as energy use approaches Type 1 levels. A few degrees of global warming might yet prove catastrophic for the biosphere and human society. With direct heating, physicists predict that we would face a doomsday event of 12 degrees centigrade warming before we even reach Type 1. The Kardashev scale was invented in the search for extraterrestrial civilizations, aliens consuming the energy of galaxies, but we still have no idea whether such intelligences exist, or what they might value or plan. So perhaps it was never about civilizations, but about us. Not us as humans, per se, but as the planetary civilization that invented this scale, imagining the future after billions of years of automated planetary processes left us with that capability. It is meant to be a scale about civilizational advancement. Let's look at ourselves, not even a one on the scale, and recognize that we are not as advanced as we might sometimes imagine. What do you think of the Kardashev scale and possible future civilizations? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.